And so um, I saw you struggling for the right language to describe the inadequacies of some local legislation, Jürgen. <laughs> That's kind of the background here, I guess, that we're starting with when we talk about why we decided to introduce this self-assessment tool, this, uh, this new version. So thank you for this opportunity to say a few words, just to explain something of its purpose and design. So, you know, we start with why did we decide it was needed? Well, you, many of you will be aware that employers around the world increasingly confront a proliferation of standards, checklists, benchmarks, indexes, so many that are inconsistent, if not contradictory in their messages and in what they require from an employer. Um, all too often, they're encouraging counterproductive compliance cultures. All too often, they're easily dismissed, even by the committed employer, as time-wasting, confusing, inconsistent, unreasonable. We know that business leaders who want to improve their disability equality performance are asking for something they can trust because it's grounded in universal principles, principles which a business can be confident are valid in every jurisdiction and which are credible to both business and to people with disabilities and which would help lift their local organizations above mere compliance with that inadequate, inconsistent local regulation that Jürgen referenced. And we needed something that reflected an understanding of the needs and reality of business and of the reality of what it means to make disability equality and inclusion real. So this self-assessment is unique in being aligned directly with universal principles that underpin and shape the ILO GBDN Charter, the United Nations Convention, the UNCRPD, and ILO's relevant labor standards. The questionnaire is explicitly designed to facilitate the best corporate practice which manages disability as an economic, a business, and a human rights priority. Because, of course, we all know that only best practice grounded in such universal principles can transform compliance with inconsistent regulations to wider business and societal benefit. So our overarching purpose, really, is about three things here. We want to enable the Global Business Disability Network's corporate members to realize their commitment to the ILO's global charter and to be able to compare their performance on the ground from country to country using a consistent benchmark. We wanted to enable them, and indeed any multinational corporation, to do the gap analysis, which determines what direction, guidance, standards, resources, national leaders need from their head office if the company is going to deliver consistent best practice, treating disabled people properly worldwide. And we want to enable consistency in how local business leaders and any national business disability networks in any country begin to define, deliver, and benchmark their disability equality and inclusion performance and set action priorities. And of course, we're after, in terms of the of an aim to complement the resources and the more in-depth guidance and standards that some national business disability networks currently provided. So this should be completed, we reckon, on a regular basis, probably annually, to monitor and drive progress. What the self-assessment is and is not, if I could just take a moment to look at some practicalities. This self-assessment does not measure the performance of a regional or head office. It's not a campaign. Users may choose to publish their scores and or share with other businesses, but the ILO GBDN will not be publishing league tables or individual company results. It does encourage structured accountability for delivering the necessary business improvements. For instance, having improvement in the job description of a named senior leader has greater impact than reliance on written policies. It doesn't measure business performance by the number of employees prepared to say that they have a disability. Such a number does not tell the employer what still needs to be done. Nor does it measure a business by its compliance with any government disability employment quotas. Quota compliance does not equate to equal treatment, nor does it enable the desired positive organizational culture. This self-assessment is, as it says on the tin, a self-assessed management tool. It's not a quality kite mark or an ISO style standard or independently certified certification. It's a management tool. So to illustrate, we ask that there be a named senior executive responsible for making sure that technology is accessible. 
that it really does liberate everyone's contribution. And it's the job of that senior executive to then look closely at the relevant technical standards, call Christopher, and set out to meet them and use specialist advisors. The benchmark does refer them to some basic resources as a starter kit, but the point is getting it right should be in the job description of this named senior executive. The survey should take no more than two hours to complete when leaders from across the local business share information relating to their performance in terms of IT, facilities, property, customer experience, HR, procurement, corporate social responsibility, stroke ESG. So our aim here was to engage quickly, directly with, and to motivate the leaders responsible for across the business improvement, rather than have this responsibility assigned to a diversity manager who may well simply not know what standards senior colleagues in procurement, property, customer care, etc., are actually working to. So very quickly to say the self-assessment's 47 questions are structured into four distinct domains, and the only answers are yes, no, don't know to focus the mind. So we've got one domain, the fundamentals, ensuring respect, fairness, equality, accessibility. Then promoting a disability confident best practice culture, different kinds of questions. Then enabling dignified and equal access for customers with disabilities. And the fourth, allyship and reporting. Are you advocating as allies to shape more efficient and equitable labor markets and to enhance the wider economic and social inclusion of people with disabilities? For more information on the scoring, please go to the ILO website. Shimrit will put up the, put up the link. So the questions are weighted to reward organizations which have mitigated significant and moderate risks of disability discrimination, unfairness, and to incentivize those interventions which fast track best practice and a sustainable disability confident corporate culture with learning directly from persons with disabilities at the heart, be they colleagues, potential colleagues, customers, valued stakeholders, expert advisors. Throughout, you'll see the strong expectation that leaders will need to invest in ongoing improvement. So it's been very exciting to see the level of interest and commitment already generated We've got launch partners helping to maximize impact from Access Israel, uh, Innova Solutions in Canada, My Ability for the DAC region, Total Energy, and of course, Valuable 500. Please do get in touch if you would also like to help encourage the widest possible take up of this high stress free management tool while helping users to deliver the business improvements that also benefit persons with disabilities and make disability equality a reality. So because um, I am sitting here at 10 o'clock at night, my time, I was told that I should leap immediately to the next uh, piece of my presentation, which was to be absolutely you know, part of this push on best practice, of course, is uh, when we're looking at recruitment, it's to explicitly address the threat to the employment prospects of hundreds of millions of persons with disabilities worldwide, created by the increasing use of artificial intelligence by HR. So we have this real dilemma, and that's why I wanted this opportunity to ask for your help, because what we see is that the need for fair, ethical, responsible treatment of the world's more than 1.3 billion persons with disabilities, simply not on the responsible AI debate agenda. Neither the AI developers nor the organizations that buy and or deploy these tools, despite all the talk about bias, are asking about disability bias, nor are they discussing the disability discrimination triggered by the way in which they're used. Just look at that phrase, standardized processes. In fact, I have to say disabled people are so missing from this debate that no one's even noticed they aren't there. I won't go through the data. You know how uh, many people with disabilities are out there. The fact that one in five women will have a disability somehow never features in discussion about gender bias in the data. If we live to be 70, we're likely to have 10 years of disability. I'm trying to find a way to say that includes AI developers who live past 69, but I'm not trying to do that. Yet, if we look at the thousands of AI-powered recruitment assessment tools now on the market, 
Neither their content, their usability, their accessibility, nor their accuracy has been validated for job seekers or employees with disabilities. Nor are these developers required to learn how to make the adjustments or accommodations in the processes into which those tools are dropped, which make equality possible. Consider the video interviews that use AI to assess your personality from your eye contact, facial expressions, word choice, voice pattern, nonverbals, to compare with those of their successful or ideal employees. Just imagine your chances if you're a candidate whose disability means you can't smile. You've got a facial disfigurement and the technology doesn't think you have a face or decides to erase it because it's somehow offensive. You have an unusual voice pattern and intonation due to hearing loss. You stammer and just take too long to answer when there's a rigid three-minute limit. Your skin tones are non-standard due to albinism, birthmarks, or you don't make eye contact because, well, you can't. And then my favorite, we have the virtual reality test that drops candidates into an ancient Egyptian tomb to test their problem-solving skills as they walk out, and which was never asked what happens to a wheelchair user score when she watches herself walk for the first time ever. Just imagine. I would urge everyone here today to check out the research from the Bavarian broadcaster, BR, showing that a candidate's personality scores, any candidate's personality scores, can change up and down between 10 and 20 points just by putting on glasses, putting on a headscarf, or putting a painting in view of the camera. Just imagine the impact on your level of neuroticism or conscientiousness scores if the camera saw your non-standard arthritic hands, the crutches by your chair, the wheelchair, or, or recorded that you whisper because of your disability. I want to stress that these AI tools do not just reinforce the economic and societal exclusion of persons with disabilities. Far from it. Many, many others are already disadvantaged in any job market and are also at risk. However, we know that systems that work for extreme users work better for everyone. And we also know that challenging the alleged science behind these life-determining assessment would also work to the wider good. So I ask you to think of disability as the discrimination litmus test. If women with a wide range of disabilities can compete fairly while navigating these AI-powered processes, everyone will find it just that much easier. I like to think even this Canadian woman. So I have three asks of our audience today. Please help us to get disability into the worldview of those influencing this hugely important debate. Please launch what I call your personal what about campaign. Start with asking what about disability whenever race and gender bias is on the table. Asking what about the impact on women and girls with disabilities when they're talking about gender bias? What about the impact on older customers with disabilities? What about the impact of people who transition from being non-disabled to acquiring a disability over time? And join us in calling for regulators around the world to introduce consumer protection style legislation, which would require developers to prove their products are safe for persons with disabilities, as named explicitly in that legislation, before they can put them on the market. Very encouraging to see the European Union going down this road. And finally, if there are any scientists with us today, we need you to challenge the quasi-science that lies underneath and around and over so many of these dubious AI-powered assessments in recruitment to the benefit of all. So I'm asking everyone here to enter it with me into a What About Disability campaign. I've got a little banner. It could just go underneath your signature. What about disability? Can we just get it into the conversation? Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. And I'll tell you what we're going to do. Whoever registered, and we're talking about hundreds from more than 100 uh, uh, countries around the world, when we will send uh, the recording, we will make sure to add that banner you're talking about. So we will uh, help in any way we can uh, to spread the word. And thank you very much. I think uh, this is creating this global movement and this global change. And we really uh, appreciate what you're doing.